Greetings everyone. Hi, this is Pastor Song Babe from Lighthouse Global. So I am coming to you day two of prayer, prophetic prayer and intercession for divine alignment. I'm really hoping that yesterday's word, today's word and tomorrow's word will have an actual impact on how things are done, how things are going. So I hope this word encourages you. We're talking about divine alignment and pr doing prophetic intercession for us to be in alignment with God and give some insight into why some uh, some of us are not fruitful, why you're not walking in Deuteronomy 28 and all those things. And today I'm going to talk about these things. I'm going to talk about um, role reversals and how um, when when the alignment is um, messed up or when the alignment is not there, what can happen to you? So we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for this prophetic prayer time. In light of God's army getting together on April 1st and Lord doing something in this season, I pray that God, you will just pour out your spirit, that you would uh, just pour out your eagle spirit, your prophetic anointing upon this broadcast. I pray for breaking off of things. I pray for alignment. I pray for prophecies. I pray for breakthroughs. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see you. Um, today, we're talking about divine alignment day two. Number one, I want to talk to you about healing from rule reversals. Now, why is it that some of you are not walking in the fullness of Deuteronomy 28? Why are you walking under curses? What's going on with you? I thought about this, and I, um, I, I really want to pray for you that you get healed from rule reversals from uh, how things were messed up when you're growing up because this is what I think I believe that um, blessings flow in in, a, in in order and in a direction for example um, there's an alignment and I'm not you know I'm not being religious I'm not being hierarchical some people have this adverse reaction against anything that's hierarchy but there is an order and a hierarchy in the kingdom of God there is a, a community you know there's a way that things are done and um you might want to argue with me but no i i really believe that there is um well simply put now let's let's if god is greater than us if god almighty yahweh is a greater being as human beings who are created by god we are to receive the grace of god from our creator that's an order like as human beings because we didn't create god we we can't um, we can't we can't give God what he doesn't have we receive from the Lord that's simply what I'm talking about the order of receiving and uh, when these alignments are messed up and when you grow up um, having role reversals basically that is um, kind of this I believe that um, God has given us fathers to give and flow to the wives and the children father fathers are the head of the household the senior pastor is the head of a church what the head of the church, head of an organization, how he or she manages flows things, it flows to the to the people underneath you, people who God's given you to entrust. But when there's a role reversal, it messes up the alignment, and that's where the confusion comes in. How many of you uh, are in a church or an organization where um, your leader is not as competent or your leader is not flowing in the way that you would like to and uh, you're stuck in this place and you're not receiving much. Well, that's why. Can there be a role reversal? I hear a lot of these things like intercessors saying, God told me to stay here and pray for my pastor. Well, I, I'm a little bit doubtful of that because uh, that can work for some season, but you can't be that. You You can't you can't be the pastor of your pastor, basically. Um, you can't be. Um, you can't submit yourself to someone who has um, pornography issues, who's who's addicted to something. You can't. You can't be under that person because they. If you are under their realm and authority, and you willingly go there, and they have these demonic issues, it's going to influence you. It's going to flow from top to bottom. So that's what I'm talking about. And so many of, of people grow up with role reversals. And, and because we kind of conditioned ourselves in this uh, abusive dynamic of role reversals. For example, if you were a child who grew up in an abusive home and you always had to correct your parents or your ungodly you know, mother or something, there's a role reversal. The child loses that season of her life where the child should have received love from God. And when there's a reversal, it's all—it's always an issue of healing where as you grow up, this has to be fixed. This has to be healed. And unless this is healed and you are set free from these role reversals, 
um, you will have a very hard time understanding walking in Deuteronomy 28. Am I making sense to you? I hope this is making sense to you. Unless we are free from it, unless we are healed from it, these rule reverse reversals, um, it's very hard for us to accept and receive the grace of the Lord and really walk in divine alignment. So I'm trying to fix your backbone. I'm trying to help you receive the blessings of the Lord from top to bottom, from God to you, from those who are supposed to be over you, who are supposed to bless you. So I want I want to give you this time to heal you, he, you know, pray for healing because um, if you grew up as a child and you had to be a blessing to your parents and they never gave anything to you, they... um. Uh, you had to grow up very quickly um, and you had to uh, mature up very quickly that might have caused a lot of pain in you and the lord is saying to you that he wants to heal you he wants to set you free that god has so much more for you um, you will go through healing in the season where you can be a child again whether it's supernaturally or in whatever way so father in the name of jesus if there's anybody that's watching this video who have who grew up in a household where there were these role reversals where they had to um, act like an adult when they were only 10 years old when they had to act like um, they you know when they were out in the front lines of earning money when they should not have um, I see a lot of that in celebrities a lot of Korean celebrities that I used to minister to a lot of them are stuck in this world reversal they're basically the breadwinner for their parents and, and you think that's okay but it's really not because it causes this person to pursue money and it messes up their whole life and they have they live under an orphan spirit and you know when you when you have conditioned yourself to have this world reversed on you yeah Yes, it, it, it attracts or, orphan spirit so you feel like there is no covering and when you when you relate to people in that way and you become the covering it later on those who are very strong very independent that feed everybody that become this a giver ends up being uh, fall, falling into narcissistic relationships or they end up being um, very broken they end up being sick in their physical body because they're pushing themselves so I'm trying to set you I'm trying to uh, heal you I'm trying to release healing because these things have misaligned you and you are in this pressure. And Father is saying to you, be free from it. Even as I speak, I see God breaking off chains off of you in your mindset in Jesus' mighty name. Those who are Christians who are in a church system, you go to a church where um, you have to be the pastor of the pastor or you have to be the leader of leaders and it's put a lot of stress on you. Well, I break that off of you in Jesus' name. You're misaligned. That might not be a place where you need to be. You know, God doesn't push us to be in a, in a place of role reversals you know it messes up everything and we lack understanding of receiving the blessing of the Lord so father in the name of Jesus I pray that God you will bring divine alignment right now in Jesus mighty mighty name I break off these negative things that are not of the Lord right now in Jesus mighty mighty name so I pray that God you will heal us from our childhood wounds of having to parent our parents, having to a mother to our mother and father, having to, a, having to be a father to our unbelieving parents. And Father, I pray that you would take us out of that place and take us to a place of being a son of God, a daughter of God, really being adopted into the kingdom of God and really lean into the place of knowing how to receive from you right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Because unless we, can, we change and shift in that mindset, uh, well, even when God wants to give you something, number one, you don't recognize that that is a gift of God. You don't recognize the need for divine alignment. You know, and even as I preach to you and prophesy and pray with you, I'm really, you know, praying that God would also send me those apostolic people who can really see and pour into me as well. You know, all of us need that. And we need to know how to receive when people give to us. And, uh, you know, my spiritual children who I pour into, even if they try, they can't really pour back into me. They can in a certain area, but that's just not the dynamic. That's not the alignment that God has for us. And and so I, I bless you to receive from the Lord in Jesus name. Number two, I feel uh, I just even as I speak, I'm just even as I speak to you and pray with you right now. I'm feeling a something in the back of my brain shift and change, almost like God rewiring our brain function. And I feel like that's the healing that God is giving you. How many of you relate to this? How many of you relate to this? Uh, some of you women, you uh, the, the, one of the biggest role reversals on a curse that's upon the whole world right now. And the, the dynamic that's happening is that wives have become a husband. Uh, wives have become a covering for the husbands. And this is such a such a painful thing for me to admit but that's just kind of in my counseling you know with a lot of the women it's like the praying mothers and the praying wives have become 
spiritual mother to their uh, you know husbands that are completely not covering them husbands that are just broken prodigals husbands that are not bringing in the money you know husbands that are being very immature and there's such a role reversal between a husband and a wife now this has become so common in certain cultures that women are always broken and they have to play that role to function to, to get the family going and it's just this back pain and even as like I said even as I preach to you and pray with you I just feel this thing in the back of my brain something rewiring I gotta look into what that is but I'm feeling the Lord shifting and changing and there's a significance of me even speaking this out because this isn't even spoken out this is this is not something that's identified but you know I you know I would say like 95 percent 95% of the marriage dynamics that I've seen is that there's been a role reversal where the, the husband was supposed to be head of the family. Husband is supposed to be the covering of the wife. But a lot of times the husbands are very immature, especially when it comes to the charismatic, especially when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And a lot of the husbands resist the Holy Spirit. They hate the Holy Spirit. They hate the prophetic. And it's always the woman and the wife that is ahead of them spiritually. They dream dreams and there's always a clash. And when that role reversal doesn't shift in the proper alignment, um, um, you know, when the husbands don't get it and they don't, they, they, it sounds really funny, unless they enthrone themselves in the, in the place of being a king in the family, in the place of being a husband, rifle husband in the family, this role reversal will cause misalignment and you're missing out on the outpouring of the blessings that God has for you. It turns into the second part of Deuteronomy 28 where the curses come. And that's why your children is oppressed. Woo, Jesus. How many of you know exactly what I'm talking about? And this is where I come into counseling. But all I can say is, you know, it's this is a really difficult dynamic that we're facing as a generation. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that there will be a rightful alignment where the husbands will be husbands as the Bible teaches. And the wives will be wives as the Bible teaches right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. That there'll be a submission, a healthy submission in every way. Then there'll be a real... There'll be a real um, revelation and healing and a new movement of husbands, new movement of authority figures, a new movement of apostles. A husband is supposed to be an apostle of the family. A husband is supposed to be a giver of the family. Now, and I speak this to you because I am super thankful. And you know how I kind of grapple with this is that as a woman pastor now you might think oh gosh how did pastor song end up being a leader and being a pastor and all of that really for me i you know my earthly father who was a pastor looking back and how i had how he managed the household how he related to my mother how he served her how he was a leader of the family and at well, during his five days of funeral when he passed away at 57 I didn't know anybody else except for my dad. Like he was the ultimate role model as a father and a, a and a man of God. And you know, I never knew how the world was until after he died. And and you know, when he was he was he he died, and in his few five days of funeral, he was a pretty uh, influential kind of public pastor, a, a man of God that many looked up to. And a lot of the church people would say testimonies of like how they love my dad and how my dad was the perfect pastor, such a shepherd, blah, blah, blah. And I never understood the significance of it until now I'm out in the world and I'm seeing how messed up the men are. And how my father had served, literally, you know, he served the wife. He's meaning like with his heart, he provided for her. He was a man of God who really, um, there was no role, no, well, there was some, there was the, the visible role reversal, it was very clear to me that the role of my father was a leader. He was uh, a, a, a covering, not only for my family, but for the whole relatives. Anybody in my relative extended family, we each had like seven uncles and aunts and uh, seven uncles with all of their extended family and, and cousins and children in both sides. My father was the man who was an apostle of everybody where he provided jobs. He, he, he was a pastor of a big church, uh, you know, a, a, a relatively uh, mega church, not mega church, well, 2,000 people, 3,000 people, that's pretty big. But he was just a real recovering for so many people. So I watched, I grew up seeing my father as a leader. I grew up seeing him as the person in front. I, I grew up seeing him as, as someone who is responsible. 
And I think growing up in that family dynamic of being very clear of what a husband's role is or a father's role is, now it's really affected me in the way that I relate to God. And it's a healthy order because I've got my order, order ordered out. I'm not confused about divine alignments, but a lot, of, a lot of the world is. You all are. And so this is what we're facing right now as a generation. It's a, it's a painful thing, but it's a role reversal. And a lot of you wives are just, uh, just suffering because your husbands are not playing the role. They're not stepping up to a place of being a covering for you. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, and I'm just bringing this into light because we're in a prayer right now. You know, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this dynamic to be broken off. Father, that you will intervene in every household, every marriage dynamic that has been messed up, that is disaligned, disengaged, that is broken in this way, that is blocking their blessings as women, as children, as people of God. Father, I pray for, for realignment, divine alignment right now in Jesus' mighty name. And, and number two, I want to talk about the value of apostolic order and covering. So this is really important. I'm praying that even, um, even as we uh, launch into this new worship movement, now, because there is no uh, teaching and idea of an apostolic order and covering, what happens is that there's chaos when you come together. There's no unity. When people come together, um, an, an army of God must operate in order and in um, uh, in alignment. There's no question about it. But why is it that it's so hard for us to build an army of the Lord? It's because of these things that I'm mentioning. Because everyone is very, un a lot of people are un unhealthy, especially in the westernized world, where we don't believe that there are people that are supposed to be honored as an apostle. We don't believe that there is a covering, that we are sufficient, we're individuals, we are good enough. You know, this is, these are the American values that are very unbiblical, that have infiltrated into the church. So you go to a church and, and it's 17 year old can just call their pastor, Pastor Chris, or like they can call their pastor Josh or like John and just think that their pastor is their friend, but mm -mm -mm, they're not. They're like 30 years older than you. They have 30 plus years of life experience. You are to submit to your pastor. You are to be aligned with him. A 17 year old, if you're sinning and having drugs, you need your pastor to set you straight. <laughs> You 17 year old, you think that you're you're equal. I mean, that's one of the biggest shockers for me. When I came to America as a teenager, you, you go to college, you go to high school, and I saw so much disrespect. And disrespect was the culture of Jacksonville, Arkansas. I was I went to high school in Arkansas, and I was in shock. The public school culture that I saw was like kids uh, putting their feet up in the middle of class, disrespect, you know, calling their teachers by their names, and thinking that they're equal, like they're 15 year old, years old, they, 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 they think they're equal with their 35 year old teacher and it just messes up everything and so when you bring that into the church you know you got these casual churches where the pastors want to look cool in their jeans but they're actually like 50 years old and there's no authority in the words nobody's listening to him or her the youth group is just out of control and these young people are you know sleeping with each other and nobody's telling them that that was wrong and it's just it's just messed up how many of you know what I'm talking about? So, you know, when we are talking about building an army of God, we have to touch upon these things because right now the, the body of Christ, the church is so messed up. It is so messed up. Father, I pray for repentance. I pray for good teachers to, to, to give um, good teaching on what it means to value an apostolic order, what it means to really value and honor covering right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. So I'm going to see, I, I'm going to encourage you, you know, when you come in April 1st to our conference, you're not coming here to see a friend named Song, just do a couple of dances. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's not where you're coming. Now, listen, I'm going to set this up for you because you are to honor the movement that I am leading. Yeah, and yes, I am the leader. That's very definite. I'm not going to have anybody on stage who's going to disrespect me. You know, I'm, I don't want you on stage. Because especially when it comes to arts, music, dance, there's so much disrespect, so much messed up order. And I'm just not going to have any of that. I'm going to have people get off the stage. 
because we are here. The weekend is going to be about building an army of God, honoring the teachings that I give because I am the leader of this movement. And as I, and I know you're not obligated to give to me. You're not obligated to submit to me, but you are listening to me and I am impacting some people. This is my time to raise up serious warriors who will be aligned with the battles that we will go to because I can't have a bunch of complainers, bunch of immature people following me around like fans and not listen to me and just not give honor and just uh, take advantage of me and what I've built. So, you know, this is not a conference that you come to make your connections to, to edify your ministry. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We're going to build an army. There's a big difference. And I want you to shift even as you listen to me. You don't have to listen to me all the time. I, want, I need us to shift our thoughts. Because I've heard some people say, well, Song, like, I don't believe in the authority of pastors. Well, that's not my theology. You got to find somebody else that has the same theology. I do believe in the authority of pastors. That if you're ordained as a pastor, there's something that shifts that, that comes. I believe in the authority of apostles, the true apostles. I believe in the authority and the, the truth of true prophets. If I don't believe that prophets, there are prophets that speak the truth, how can I follow a prophetic ministry? How can I follow a prophetic ministry if I don't believe in the apostolic order and in, in the apostles and the authority the apostles had? How can I interpret book of Acts? How can I interpret how what happened in the book of Acts when Holy Spirit came and Peter was anointed? He started preaching and 3,000 came to Jesus. That was an apostolic authority. How can I explain the story of Ananias and Sapphira who just uh, d dropped dead because they lied to the apostle? How can we explain that? How can we explain that? So I just really feel that um, we need to get back to understanding the word of God as it is and that we need to see the authority of Jesus Christ. We need to acknowledge the authority of the role and the, the placement of what God gives you. And I'm not demanding you to respect me as a prophet, but I'm just saying I take the Bible seriously. I take my calling seriously. That's why I'm not giving up on it. And you better not mess with me because I'm not joking around when I prophesy to you. I'm really seeing stuff and telling you the truth. If I'm a fake prophet, I'm telling you what I don't see. Well, I will be judged by the Lord. I can't do that. I can't. I cannot lie. Right. So I just feel like this is some of the basic things we need to pray for as you enter into uh, working with me uh, more closely. You can be of distance, just admiring my prophetic words. That's fine. But, you know, if you're going to come on April 1st, I am serious about building this army of the Lord. I need some people with integrity. I need people on the same page. I need people who understand loyalty and honor. This conference is not for you to come to connect with other dancers so that you can build your dance team. This conference is not a conference where you come and listen to some EDM and say, hey, can I use that music to just dance in my room? That's not what this is about. This is doing actual warfare. See, this is doing real warfare to save America from the real battle of demons. Demons are real. God is real and demons are real. We are seriously fasting and praying for a real shift in the change in the governmental realm of United States of America because we are under real attack. Your depression, the mental illness, the suicidal thoughts, that's real. You know, we're battling that. So we can't play around right now. So that's what I am trying to give you. There is a value of apostolic order and of covering. And if somebody is your intercessor, somebody's covering you in prayer, you must honor them. Because if they are saying, oh, I'm praying for you and they never pray for you, that's a fake covering. But you need to find those people who are like spiritual mothers and fathers who genuinely follow through on the things that they promise. Who genuinely follow through on the things that they promise. And you need to give them honor. So lastly, we need to talk about it, this. How I'm, I'm speaking all of this to help you to align yourself, divine alignment, to to experience the blessing that Deuteronomy twenty eight says. Number three, we need to understand loyalty and honor, and we see this in the Bible in the book of uh, Ruth. Ruth was loyal to Naomi, and that's how she received her blessing. Blessings flow. Divine alignment, understanding divine, divine alignment is key to uh, receiving the rightful blessing God has for you. And Ruth is a classic story. So Ruth, Ruth says, do not urge me or to leave me, leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. People, your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there, there I will be buried. 
may the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything, but death parts me from you. So, you know, um, Ruth is saying to Naomi that I am going to be loyal to you until the end. We don't see this kind of quality of loyalty these days. I love my spiritual father, Bob Sorge, who writes books on amazing topics. He wrote a book on loyalty. I highly recommend you buying that book, Loyalty, and reading it. You know, loyalty and honor. Now, Ruth became an ancestor of Jesus, and her story is in the Bible because she was a Gentile who did not qualify, who was not qualified to be in Naomi's family line. She was not qualified to be in Jesus' family line. She was not qualified. But how did she receive, how did she receive um, qualification to become a great great grandmother of Jesus, Jesus Christ, in the mess messianic family line, is because of her loyalty. It's because of her loyalty. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that God, you will teach us. You will shift something in your spirit. Not only I'm not speaking this to you to demand loyalty, your loyalty to me. I'm talking about your life in general. There are people that God sent you in your life that you must be loyal to. You need to discern who that is and you need to stay in the lane of loyalty. You need to practice loyalty. You need to live out a life of loyalty. And you need to live out a life of honoring them, being loyal to them, honoring them, giving them the rightful due for the things that they poured into you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that those who we felt unqualified, even if we are unqualified, of receiving those blessings that you have for us, Make us loyal. Give us insight into knowing who we are to pledge our loyalty to, who the spiritual apostles are, who our spiritual covering is, and give us uh, the, the strength to be loyal to them, to recognize, so that the, the blessing will flow through them to us right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray in tongues for two or three minutes. I hear the Lord saying the next revival, the next reformation is a character reformation, is a um, character revival. Yes, salvation of, of people. That is that is one of it. But I really feel that God is going to deal with the rooted rooted cultural issues of um, a church that is that do, a, a church that does not characterize, does not signify, does not represent the kingdom of God, that the kingdom of God will manifest through the way that we relate to one another, through the characteristics, through the character building of Christians. So, Father, I pray that you would do that because we're so tired of fake churches. We're so tired of lies uh, from prophets. We're so tired of compromising messages i pray that there'll be a reformation of character in the body of christ right now in jesus mighty name the the misalignment the role reversals the messed up order of things god i pray for divine order to be set right now in jesus mighty mighty name in each person's life right now and those who you have called to align with what i am doing and the calling and the mantle that i am carrying i pray that you will congregate them they will come together and be loyal to the vision not to the person, but to be, to be loyal to the word of God, to be loyal to the vision that God has given me. Because some of you are tuning into me because you're feeling something. As I speak, you're feeling, man, that woman of God, like everything she says resonates with me. That's a sign that you are to align with me. Not everyone aligns with me in that way. And I know there are people that are supposed to align themselves with me and be more committed, be more loyal. There are people like that, that I have to walk, you have to run with me to battle these battles. But it, it, it has to be the Lord. It cannot be of the flesh. So, Father, those who you have called to align with me, I pray that you will call them from north, east, south, and west, from every direction, from nations. Shabba in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Shakara Because this is a time when overall, all around the world, God is building an army of the Lord. God is building an army of the Lord. The Lord is building an army of the Lord. God is building an army because we got some real battles to do. We got some real demons to root out. We got some real transformation to do. Father, so for the sake of your kingdom, I pray that you would align the right people right now. Come into alignment, I command you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. The distractors, the stealers, the thieves be cut off right now in Jesus' name. Those who are really aligned to the purposes and the vision of God, come into alignment right now in Jesus' mighty name. Cut off all soul ties with the thieves, with the 
trolls, with the uh, kind of spies. I cut them out in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for alignment right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. In relationships in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. I prefer the, even the right covering for this ministry as well. Not just like a fake covering where their names, I use their names as board. You know, how many of you know that those ministry boards, they're not your real covering? How many of you know what I'm talking about? You can have all the right names, all the famous people on a sheet of paper and say, these people support me, but they don't even know you. So I don't want any of that. Father, I pray for apostles, prophets, intercessors who will align with this ministry and will cover. I pray that you will bring them forth, even the older ones, even those who have been praying into the next generation revival. I pray that you will call them forth right now in Jesus' name. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Just because you, you've got all these famous people on a sheet of paper and say that they're on your board, they don't even pray for you five minutes a day. They're not even interested in the struggles that you're going through. They're not really your board. They're not your covering. So that's not what I'm talking about i've had some pressures from people say some people are wondering who you are so who's your connection which denomination where are you from i know there's a lot of that and i understand but you know um i could have a bunch of people on my paper and say oh these are my coverings i know these people well do they really pray for me when my life is in crisis no no they're too busy they're too busy these famous people are too busy you know, when I really need money, do you think they're the ones that God provide for them? No, it's the nameless and faceless people. I don't even know who gave me money. I'm like, oh, it was from the Lord, you know. So we're not talking about those formalities, although those are important to gain respect, right? You don't want, you don't want weird people to ministering. So I get it. But that's not what I'm talking about. There's a divine alignment that's happening in the spirit realm. Father, I pray that you will bring them from north, south, east, and west right now in Jesus' name. And in, even from nations. Relationships between Elijah and Elisha. Things like that. Relationship between Naomi and Ruth. That kind of relationship. Relationship between David and Jonathan. I pray this kind of alignment right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Relationship between Jesus and his disciples. That's what I'm talking about. Father, Father, I pray for divine alignment in relational aspects right now, in Jesus' mighty, mighty name, for the shouldering of the gospel in the next season, in Jesus' mighty name. There's greater harvest that's coming, but we all cannot do this by ourselves. Father, I pray for divine alignment, working together, shouldering together as brothers and sisters who will walk in, in alignment, in same marching order towards the fulfillment of your vision for greater revival reformation of United States of America and the nations. Right now in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. Shakar, I see a shift that I'm feeling. God is putting you in place. Some of you have been afraid to be, hey, uh, some of you have been actually afraid to be an authority figure. And you know, I want to encourage you, be that authority figure you need to, be that mama you need to be. I mean, I'm not afraid, you know, I just feel like even recently, I was confronting some of the young people of some of the sins that they were, some of the issues that I had to confront with. And I just feel like God's saying, Song, you got to be a big mama and just tell them they were wrong. I have no problem with that. I feel like that's my role now. That's my. That's me being aligned with them. Like I need to tell you, if you are sinning, I have to tell you you are sinning. Like I don't have, and and I feel like so many leaders are afraid to be in that role of an authority figure. I bless you. <laughs> If you are to be an authority figure, be that. I bless you. Push you into that place of authority. Push you into that place of leadership. Push you into that place of being a spiritual father. I push you into that being in that place of being a spiritual mother. Being a voice of reason. Being a voice of the Bible. Being a voice of Jesus. Shout in Jesus. Mighty, mighty name. Unless you step into that. Your kids are not going to be aligned. So Father, I pray for us to be bold and courageous, to step into being that, that, that person that you've called us to be, to be the apostle, to be that prophet, to be the mother, spiritual mother and the father right now. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. And I call forth the warriors, the army, the soldier, those who are to align to come April 1st and 3rd. We see the glory cloud that's coming Nissan 1st. I prophesy that again and again right now in Jesus' name. I call forth provision for the vision from every direction. Shabbat Provision for the vision from every direction. Outpouring of manifestation. Presence of God, God. Shabbat Signs, wonders, and miracles. God, creativity, dances, warfare. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Shabbat Amen and amen. I think amazing things will happen April 1st. So come to Florida if you can. And I just bless you. 
join me tomorrow for day three of divine alignment and share this video share this video i think yesterday's video was very insightful it's prophetic encouragement and prayer so just pray with me today was about relationship so let's just press in and pray and share this video i, I feel like even as i'm speaking to you these words are life to some of you you all needed to hear that so god bless you love you guys bye bye